<clears throat> hey guys, God bless you. Um, I wanted to come on and uh, just share uh, some encouragement and some of the word and, uh, and just really uh, just a lesson that the Lord taught me today. Uh, it was really cool. Um, <clears throat> before I get into it though, I just want to open in prayer. Father, I thank you God for your holy word. Thank you for your righteousness, God, and your holiness, without which no man will see God, no man will enter into your kingdom, God without the righteousness of Christ Jesus in them. So I thank you, Father. I thank you for your holy word. Thank you for direction and guidance. And I just ask for your wisdom, God, because I need it, Lord. Without you, I have no wisdom, and I have no righteousness, and I am nothing without you, Father. And I pray, God, that you would just use me. Let me be a conduit for your love, for your power, for your truth, and let me be an oracle, a mouthpiece for you, Father. And let them not see me, but see Christ in me, the hope of glory. <clears throat> and I praise you, God. And I thank you, and I bless you. And I ask this all in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Um, so the, <clears throat> the lesson was, um, as I was on a, just a prayer walk, um, I love to just go and just to get alone with God, you know, and out in nature and see his creation because all creation points to a divine creator, uh, uh, all powerful, all seeing, all knowing creator. Um, and it has every, I like to look at, um, things like say leaves or, uh, trees or birds and, and think that they have the fingerprint of God. Like that's, God's divine stamp of creation on each creature because it says, <clears throat> let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord because he gave them the breath to do so and he created them and everything gives glory to God. So even if we are silent, it says that even the, the very rocks will cry out in praise to God, but we don't want those rocks to take our places. So this is the the cool lesson that God taught me. Um, we have to be teachable and trainable and, and humble, walk in humility, so that when these things happen, we can be taught these lessons and to learn and grow and to use them and apply them to our life so that we're not just a hearer of the word, but a doer. <clears throat> and forgive me for the sound effects on the side of me. Um, our dog, uh, she's... Uh, Scratching herself again. <laughs> she likes to make a little cameo appearance. Um, so in this lesson, I was down near this creek, and there's this, this waterfall. And I looked a little past the waterfall, and there was stagnant water. But near the waterfall, where the water was flowing constantly, and, you know, and pretty good. It was flowing pretty decently. Um it was fine and the water was clear, but where that water was stationary and stagnant, where the flow wasn't coming, um, or wasn't as moving as fast, <clears throat> there was this, the buildup and gunk. Well, that's like our lives is like, we can't let the living water within us grow stagnant. We have to let it be a pure flow, a pure conduit. That means we can have no sin. We can have no dross. And it's only through him, like through repentance and holiness in him. <clears throat> but so he's the living water, the fountain that never runs dry. So we need to always go to the source to get that living water continuously bubbling up. That's the Holy Spirit within us because out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. So that rivers of living water should be flown out of us in a pure source and a pure flow. And that's what the Lord taught me is like, if we are stationary in him, we're going to become stagnant. If we don't go forward in him and we're not always constant moving, then we're going to have that stagnation. We're going to, we're going to actually transgress. Go, we're going to start going backward instead of forward. But when we're going in him, moving constantly every single day, like through this word, like building ourselves up, stirring ourselves up, um, we're going to have that pure flow that's it's powerful, it's vibrant, but yet at the same time it's gentle and it's beautiful and it's and it's just um, 
it's just wondrous, you know, the spirit of the living God in us. And I just praise the Lord for his Holy Spirit. But yeah, I love how he just he uses simple things to teach me uh, complex, wondrous uh, lessons that I can apply to my life and then I can share with others that, you know, can build you guys up. And, and that's where I'm going to get into the scripture is about that. <clears throat> so we're going to be in a... First one we're going to be in is Jude, chapter 1, verse 20. <clears throat> but you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God while you're awaiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which leads to eternal life. On some have compassion, using discernment, <clears throat> and others save with fear while pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garments stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. So <clears throat> we need to, like what I was talking about, is to, you know, we need to build ourselves up, but we also need to build others up too you know but this says right here is to build yourselves up we need to stir ourselves up every day like and how one way we do that is by his holy word like we we get it and graft it into our our hearts so that no one can snatch it out but it's also like when we're feeling times of weariness we can just go to his word and recite it and grab it and stand on it and so that that living waters can bubble up in us and flow out of us into everyone around us. Um, because that's what they need. They need that living water to go through the dry and barren lands. So that those barren, dry lands become bountiful and fruitful and grow into such beauty that God gets the glory and he gets the increased. <clears throat> so we need to... Keep building ourselves up, stirring ourselves up daily. And that's through through his word, that's through prayer, that's through edifying one another and even ourselves. Like we need to we need to be our own hype men or hype women, like hype ourselves up in his holy word, you know, be bold in his word and recite it like God's promises are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. So everything that he says in his holy word, that's something we can stand on. That's something we can embrace and run with. And it's a promise and he'll never contradict himself and never return void. It will complete what he sent it forth to do. <clears throat> so we need to keep ourselves in the love of God while we're waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which leads to eternal life. So we're waiting. We're waiting for his mercy. We're waiting for his glorious appearing. We're, we're waiting for him. But it says that while we wait for his mercy, you know, which leads, you know, it's the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, which leads to eternal life. We need to keep ourselves in his love. So the waiting it's not a passive thing. It's an active thing because you're trusting and in it. People that say otherwise, they just don't know the, the reality of waiting in him. He says, be still and know I am God. That's faith to do that. You know, and that's faith to trust in him. No matter like what the circumstances look like, we, we stand and haven't done all we done to stand. We stand. But here's the key. <clears throat> here's a key in this. It says, On some we have compassion, using discernment. Others save with fear, while pulling them out of the fire, having even the garments stained by the flesh. I, I briefly touched on this. Is like Some people were ministering to um, friends, family, strangers. Uh, you know, it's a fearful thing. And we're, we're, they're being saved pulling them out of the fire. You know, that means they're just barely being pulled out of that fire and others will have to go through the cleansing fire, the refinement ahead. <clears throat> uh, and we're 
blessed to be refined now. Like, I don't know about you guys, but these last three ish years have been some of the um, hardest refinement times of my life of purification. And it's a beautiful thing. I don't, would not trade it for anything, but it has been hard. I can't deny that. But you know what? The fire does burn. But once you come out of that fire, there's the cool relief of the living water. And you're strengthened in it. And I just want to encourage you guys because I love this kind of stuff. I love uh, bladesmithing, um, like swords and knives being built, uh, but especially swords. Uh, if you get a chance, check into the process of a sword being made uh, because it's spiritual. Uh, like you, you can have a spiritual lesson in that like because it's the same thing that God does for us. Like he molds us and that's what a piece of metal, it's, it's cut, it's molded and it's hit with a hammer over and over being refined. Uh, and then it's put into the fire, to, you know, to help mold it and to, you know, strengthen it. And then after that, it's put into the cool water um, and it hardens it. So it's really cool. Check it out. Um, now, him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with the rejoicing. Well, that's Jesus. He is going to keep us from falling. And he's going to present us blamely before the presence of his glory with rejoicing. Because why? He is the only wise God and Savior. For him alone be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen. So he's going to keep us from falling. But you know what? We're going to stumble from time to time. But... That's where we repent and we humble ourselves and and just turn away and turn to him to seek him out. And don't be prideful. Don't, you know, try to push it off on someone else or excuse sin. No, we admit it. We own it. We repent of it. And we rebuke it and we turn to the living God and go and mature in it. We learn from it, grow from it. So the other uh, scripture verses I wanted to go in is uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. Okay, so this is, Let us cons uh, consider how to spur one another on towards love and good works. Let us not forsake in the assembly of ourselves together, as in the manner of some. But let us exhort one another, especially as you see the day approaching. So there's the thing. is like we need to spur one another towards love and good deeds. Like, because as Jesus walked, we ought to walk. But we need to encourage one another. Like, uh, if you're married, encourage your spouse. Because, um... That's part of our stewardship. Our spouse is under our stewardship. We don't own the person. We don't, we're we not uh, ahead of them, better than them in the aspect of that. But what we are is that they've entrusted into our care. And God is the owner because he's, he's the creator. He's our father. Like his ownership is on the stamp of creation. So he's bought us with his precious blood. He's purchased us to redeem him, us back to himself. <clears throat> so our stewardship is our, our, our wives. If, if you're married, then your children, that you're, they're little disciples in Jesus. Uh, and you're training them in the ways that they should go so they don't soon stray. Because if we don't, train them the world will and by proxy that's satan because he's the god of this world of those children that are in disobedience so we got to spur each other on we got to encourage each other uh and that also doesn't go just for um whether we're married and you know or children but friends family strangers we need to encourage them every chance we get Every act of love, we bring the kingdom of God. And there's nothing insignificant in the kingdom of God. 
because if it's done to the glory of God, then that's huge. <clears throat> so we need to exhort one another. That means like edify, build up, you know, strengthen them because we can either build up or we can tear down. You know, we can either bless or we can curse. But that day is approaching. It's nearer now than when we first believed. So we need to keep spurring and encouraging and keep administering the truth that sets us all free. Because you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. That means sometimes we need to be free from misconceptions or doctrines of demons or uh, just whatever comes our way that's false. Because even... A little bit of poison is still poison. So with that intimacy is how we're going to know what's of him and what's not. And that's the discernment. You know, it's one of the one of the, the gifts of the spirit is discernment of spirits. <clears throat> so that's uh, what I wanted to encourage, encourage you guys uh, with that little... Uh, lesson that the Lord had taught me today. Um, and there's always stuff like that, you know, and God's not a respecter of persons. He loves you guys just as much. And like I said, I'm not better than anyone else. We're all equal. Uh, regardless if someone's been following the Lord longer than another, they're not better. They're just farther along in their journey. But you know what? That journey leads to the same place. Christ. Christ is the hope of glory. That's who we're running that race you know, for, towards, so we can reach that finish line, so we can get that victor's crown, so that we can lay it down at the feet of Jesus, and that so we can hear, you know, as soon as we hit that finish line, that tape, uh, we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into my rest. Oh, I long to hear those words, because you know what? At that, all your cares are washed away, and they're all eclipsed by glory. And it's your, what you went through on this earth, it's irrelevant to eternity in Christ. Uh, so I just want to encourage you guys to keep pressing on. It is hard. You know, we've, we've all been going through tribulations throughout our life and great tribulations coming indeed for the word declares. But just know that he is with us. He said he'll leave, not leave us, nor forsake us. He'll be with us in trouble. And he said if he is for us, who or what can be against us? Guys, I love you so much. God bless you. God keep you. May God shine his face on you now and the days ahead. Um, if you guys have any prayer needs, uh, just post a you know message. And uh, we'd love to just just to pray with you, to join you right where you're at, where, where God's moving and he will move because he moves mountains and he is just amazing and he is all powerful. He's more powerful than the circumstance or the issues you're facing. And just know that you're loved. We love you so much. We love you and we pray for you genuinely. Like when you guys put something up, I'm praying for you or even just your, your name down there. And we need that prayer encouragement too because we are under attack daily but we are victorious in jesus christ because in christ death where is your sting hell where is your victory we win no matter what to live is to christ to die is to gain all right guys i'm going to pray us out father i thank you god for my brothers and sisters I thank you for refreshing them with your holy word and refreshing me too because as much as I say it, Lord, to them, I need it myself. So I thank you, God. I thank you for the lesson that you gave me today, God, and just the, the time of intimacy in your presence is special and to be treasured, and I love it, God, and I ask for more of it, and I pray more of it for my brothers and sisters, God, that we become like you and nothing like us god so that we so decrease that there's nothing of us but christ in us the hope of glory i praise you for them god and i pray god for my brothers and sisters lord um god i know of one specifically lord of her 
and her son, Lord, I pray for my sister and her son that have gone to the hospital, that you would just meet them right where they're at, Lord. And I rebuke these attacks against her son, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke these lying spirits. I rebuke these attacks against them because the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, and my righteousness is of Jesus Christ. So I hit those attacks with the word of God and the truth. And by your wounds, Lord, they are healed and refreshed and strengthened physically, mentally, spiritually, God. Just surround them in a wall of fire, Lord. I pray your hand be on them, your peace be upon them, Lord. And I just pray, God, that those that don't know you, God, that watch this, God, I pray, God, if anything, Lord, they would just even try and see that you are good. They would just say, Lord, reveal yourself if you're real. Because I want to see. I want to see for myself. And you will meet them right where they're at, God. I know that. You did it for me. And you'll do it for them. I praise you, Lord. And I thank you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the only begotten Son of God, who was sent to the Father, who was born of a virgin, lived a holy, righteous life, 24-7 submission to the Father, he took my sins, my iniquities, my chastisements, my curses, and he nailed them to the cross. And having defeated hell, death, and the grave, he rose victorious on that third day. And he is seated forevermore in heaven with the Father. But he is coming back for us. But let us be ready every day as, as, if, as it is the day, and we'll be ready on the day. And let us be ready for whatever comes through the Spirit of the risen Lord. And I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right, guys, God bless you, and we'll see you again, Lord willing.